Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. And one of the interesting things you can do with the Jetson Nano single board computer is build a JetBot. This is actually a project that uh, NVIDIA has put together. They give you all the instructions and everything you need to know how to build a robot that can use machine learning. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So JetBot is a project that uh, NVIDIA have made public. They include all the uh, bill of materials and all the part numbers and the instructions to put it all together. They provide the software, they provide everything you need to build the JetBot with a single idea that you can use it for demonstrating the machine learning power of the Jetson Nano board. And here in this particular case, when I mean machine learning, we're talking about reading from the video camera and then doing things like, you know, object tracking or, uh, you know, testing to see whether the path is free so that the robot can continue forward. So when I saw what this little robot could do, I thought to myself, I've got to build myself one of those. And so I've been through the whole experience and I want to share with you today what it's like to build a jet bot and what it's like to use one. As to do that, we're going to look at three separate stages. The first of all is the actual physical build, all the hardware that you need. The second is the software. And the third aspect, of course, is that machine learning. What can the JetBot actually do? So starting with the actual build, NVIDIA give you all the list of materials that you need on their website with instructions, including photographs of how to put it all together. Now, for me, the hardest bit was getting the 3D printed parts. I don't have a 3D printer, but fortunately, a friend of mine has a 3D printer. And I said to him, do you recognize what these files are? He goes, yeah, yeah, I know what those are. I said, can you print me those bits? And he did very kindly. And so I was able to get hold of the chassis and the different bits you need for the ball bearing and so on on there but if you don't have a 3d printer then you're going to have to find someone who has one or find a website that will allow you to buy a pre-made chassis for the jetbot now putting together the jetbot is quite simple because there are instructions and photographs of everything that you need to do however you will need some soldering skills now my soldering skills are absolutely terrible now there are two main soldering bits of this project one is to do some soldering on the a board for the stepper motors. Now I did that okay, came through that fairly unscathed. However, you also have to do some soldering on the Pi OLED display, which is a small display used by the JetBot to display its current IP address. And when I got to doing that, I don't know what I did wrong. I just messed it up completely. I ended up ruining the display and it was all my fault because I'm just not very good at soldering. So actually the JetBot that I built doesn't use the uh, Pi OLED display. And the way I got around that was I gave it a static IP address. So I always know what address to connect to. But it's also worth mentioning there is a little script that runs on the actual JetBot that tries to update that display. And if the display is not there, it kind of does get itself into a bit of a spin. And so I had to deactivate that service because it was using up a lot of CPU time. Another area where I had some trouble was with the battery. Now inside the chassis there is a space to put in an external charger that maybe you'd use on charging up you know kind of your smartphone when you're away from home and actually it's of a particular size and you have to have one that supports three amps. Now all the ones I had in my house were either not three amps or if they were three amps they were too big. So when I tried first of all using it with just the big one I kind of balanced it on top of the board and it looks absolutely horrendous and it kept falling off but at least it proved to me that the board was working so after a while i tried with some other different battery chargers i've got other external batteries and when they were lower than three amps it kind of didn't work it might boot up and when you'd go to kind of move the, the bot forward a little bit then suddenly it would all just shut down because the power requirements were just too high so eventually I did some more research and I bought another external battery that supports three amps. The one that NVIDIA recommends wasn't currently available on Amazon. So I bought a kind of an equivalent one. I checked all the measurements, it does fit into the slot. However, I then came across a second problem. And that is that these modern external batteries have very clever circuitry so that when they see that a port isn't drawing any current, it kind of shuts that port down. Now the problem is when you're not actually using the JetBot because you're doing something uh, on your keyboard, then the, the stepper motors are not being used. And so the battery charger would say, oh, well, this port is not being used and it would just shut it down. And then finally, when I would hit the button to expect the JetBot to move forward or something, it wouldn't move. And I'm like going, why, what's happened? I don't understand, these commands are correct. This should be working. And actually, it was because there was no current going through to the stepper motors. 
So the way I got around that, I looked at the stepper motor board, and it says it supports between five and 12 volts. So I thought, well, this is a fairly robust board. So I actually had a little battery compartment with four uh, AA batteries in, and I uh, soldered that directly onto the board. You could also use, for example, a nine volt square battery and put that straight onto the board, and then that would solve the problem. And then the external battery I used for powering the Jetson Nano itself, and that's always drawing current because it's running. So therefore the problem was solved. And the final little thing that I did differently to the actual project on the website is that I didn't have the fancy Wi-Fi adapter for the Jetson Nano. So I used one that I plug into an external USB. It doesn't look as nice because you've got this kind of this big dongle stuck on the side of the thing, but it works. It actually works. And you can use any uh, Wi-Fi USB that will be supported by let's say the uh, Raspberry Pi. It's gonna work here on the Jetson Nano. So once the hardware was done, the next step was to download the software. Now there is a specific distribution that you download and put onto the SD card just for the JetBot and it contains everything that you need. Now you're gonna need a 64 gigabyte card. And actually when I first downloaded it, I tried burning it onto the 64 gigabyte card and it wouldn't fit the uh, program said, you can't put this image on this card, it's too small. I then went hunting around a bit. Actually, that's a known problem. There is also a 63 gigabyte version of the same file. Now, what's interesting is these files are huge. It's like 6.4 gigabytes to download. So having downloaded the first 6 point gigabyte file, I then went and uh, tried to use it on a 128 gigabyte card and it didn't work. I don't know why I burnt it three different times using different software. Every time I plugged it in, tried to boot it, it just wouldn't boot. Now, while that was going on, I was also downloading the 63 gigabyte version that did burn onto the card, etch, you know, right itself onto the card and booted the JetBot without any problems. So that's just something to be aware of. And so finally, what happens is once you've got it booted up, you then got access directly to the JetBot and all the bits and libraries that you need are already there and NVIDIA demonstrate how to use it using Python. Now there are a set of different Python scripts and tutorials you can work your way through. One of them just allows you to kind of move the bot in the left and right and just play around with it. Another one will take a gaming controller that you kind of plug into your PC and then through HTML and JavaScript, it recognizes what you're doing on the controller, which then in turn tells the robot to do something. So it's like kind of a very expensive uh, remote control robot. But the really interesting thing comes to when you try to do some actual machine learning stuff. So the demo that NVIDIA have put together is one about object avoidance. And so what you do is you uh, put the bot in a, an environment that you want to use it, and you basically teach it by taking photographs from the inbuilt camera, times that it can go forward, and times that it can't go forward. And it's called blocked and free. And basically you put the bot in different positions, and you say this position is free, you can go forward, this position is blocked. Now, actually, I ended up taking about 25 different uh, pictures, and I thought that would be enough, but actually it turns out that you meant to take hundreds and hundreds of pictures. Now, thankfully, in my case, I was doing a very, very simple situation. It was a very open uh, floor, and all I did was I took a toy animal, and I stuck it in front of the bot, and when it sees that animal, it has to stop. And when that animal is not there, it can drive on. So using the 25 or so photos that I took, half blocked, half free, it was able to work. Now, once you have the data set, you then have to train the neural network to recognize the difference between blocked and unblocked. And to do that, you actually need to plug your, um, your JetBot back into the mains. You can't do this from the battery because it's gonna be doing lots and lots of hard computing as it trains that neural network. In fact, you can also do this off-site on a different computer, one with an NVIDIA graphics card in it, and then you can take that model and download it onto the JetBot. So once I connected it all up with the power, I went through the instructions, trained up the new model, and then you download the model back onto the JetBot, and then you switch it back to using the battery, and, and it worked. I, I've got a little video here showing you that you can drive, it goes along, you put the toy animal in front of it, it stops, you take the toy animal away, and then it carries on driving. Now, it's really a very, very simple example. However, this here is the complete building blocks that you would need to create something quite sophisticated in terms of robotic control and in terms of using that camera. So if you really are interested in learning machine learning and you're interested in the stuff you can do through a camera, but not just be sitting at your desk looking at different photos, actually have something that works in front of you, then that makes the JetBot quite exciting. 
Of course, there are lots of other ways to build little robots. You can get lots of kits for things like the Raspberry Pi, but I suppose the power here is that it's doing that object recognition stuff on the GPU, which is on the uh, Jetson Nano board. So overall, I did enjoy building the JetBot. I did enjoy learning how it worked. And I suppose if I was interested kind of in learning more and more and more about machine learning, I could actually develop this project much, much further to make it very clever in how it navigates around. So that could be quite interesting. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to pursue that even further. But if you do, then the JetBot might be a good way into this whole area of machine learning, object tracking, object recognition, and so on. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.